I've got the verse up again already. Happy Tuesday or whatever day you happen to be watching this again. And surprise, here's what we're talking about yeah, today. Spoiler. <laughs> I can't see any of that, so you, you shared it with me, so I know now. So as you can actually see, we're continuing this very well-known and, and for me, very well-loved psalm. Um, if you've ever had a baby and I came and visited with you, you've heard me read part of this psalm, not this passage, but the one uh, that we're going to talk about tomorrow. Uh, but today, I love these words. They give me so much comfort. For, so let me go ahead and open up with prayer, and then I think Chris is going to read these words from Psalm 139 for us and start us off. Um, Lord God, we thank you for an opportunity to dig into your word. We thank you, God, that as we do this, it can bring us encouragement. It can bring us comfort. And Lord, we're going to look at a fact today that changes everything. It just changes our whole lives. May we wrestle with that. May we see how important this is. And Lord, I pray that it will truly change every aspect of our lives. Uh, we love you and we thank you, Lord. And we ask you to open our hearts and minds right now in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So yeah, as, as you see, we're continuing Psalm 139. Yesterday we covered 1 through 6, and we're going to go through 7 through 12 right now. And, if, and I would encourage you to, at some point, maybe just sit down and read this on your own, uh, with your own Bible, you and God, and shut everything else out. Uh, so 7 through 12 says, Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol or the grave, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as day, for darkness is as light with you. So again, this just like what we read yesterday, you can see this in one of two ways, depending on your view of God. You can see this as a negative thing, like I can't get away from him. Um, and, and I'm trying to get away from him because I want to do stuff that he's, he's not going to like. Or you can see it at the way that this is meant to be seen and the way that the psalmist saw this, which is that you are never going to find yourself in a situation in life that God is go not going to be with you. He's not going to be there to offer you strength and hope and wisdom and guidance and protection. There's nowhere you can go that you're going to find yourself separated from God and outside of his love and outside of his protection and outside of everything that he has for you. Um, life can get scary sometimes. Life can get dark. Unexpected things happen. And um, depending on where your focus is, you can start to focus on the darkness and you can start to feel like that darkness is, is going to overwhelm me. But as he says in uh, verse 11, if I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the day and the light about me be night. What he's saying it is if I get to the point that I'm looking at the dark things and I'm going, man, this is just this is too dark. This is this is too bad. This is too hopeless. But the proper response to that is, no, even the darkness is not dark to you. And the night is as bright as the day for the darkness is as light with you. And as we were talking about this passage before we started recording, um, another passage this makes me think of, um, because I think this is exactly what this psalm is saying, is Romans 8. Uh, this is Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else at all in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that's the way to see these verses in the Psalms because the God who we cannot get away from is a God of love. So when you're in his presence, you're in the presence of his infinite love. And that's a really good thing. There's, there's a lot of talk about the presence of God. And for me, the presence of God is is huge comfort. I mean, it's just that to me is a game changer. That changes everything uh, because I really believe with all my heart that if we understood that the God that created the heavens and the earth, the God that has done these incredible mighty miracles, the God that has all authority, all strength, all power, and yet, like we talked about yesterday, is a God of love and a God of grace 
and a God of mercy. If we believe that that God is right here with me, wherever I find myself or whatever I find myself in, like a situation like right now, um, if I believe that, then it changes every single aspect of my lives because I have nothing to fear. I have nothing to be afraid of uh, because God is with me. So that's the presence of God. And that's what this is talking about. And, and even though there, it isn't so much if I'm trying to run away from God, um, I love those first verses that Chris read because there is an aspect or an element of I, if I wander off the path, guess what? Even if I wander off the path, maybe not willingly, but I just got caught up in sin or I got caught up in myself or I got caught up in loneliness or I got caught up in depression or I got caught up in whatever it may be, God isn't going to just abandon me. He isn't just going to leave me. God goes wherever I go. He goes with me and his love and his grace, therefore, go with me as well. And I love that last part that you um, made a reference to, Chris, about the darkness. Um, a lot of us look at this world right now, and I, I hear lots of different things out there. There's lots of different opinions out there. But a lot of people um, use words that indicate that the darkness that they're seeing is bigger than God. <laughs> and what, what the psalmist realizes here is, that's I don't true. care what, yeah, that's not true. I don't care what darkness you're going to face. Um, the darkness can never cover God because God's light shines in the midst of the darkness. And then the night is bright as the day because God is still there. Even when we find ourselves in dark times or in dark places, God is still there. And what I really love and, and, I want to just tie it into one more passage, and this one is from Philippians. And so you might hear pages rustling as I move, or maybe that was quiet. I don't know. Philippians chapter 4, and I just want to close with this. Uh, we've done devotions on this. You've heard me talk about this a lot. It's four words that I believe changed my life, and I hope and pray will change your life. The Lord is near. Because if you get that, if you believe that, it changes everything. Anxiety, fear, all of that can go out the window. So it says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. And that's the key for the next line. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's from Philippians 4, starting at verse 4. But the key is those four words, the Lord is near. So Chris is going to wrap this up, but I, I, I've got one question. He may expand upon it with other questions, but I really want you to wrestle with this and how do those four words how do those four words the lord is near or how should those four words change everything in your life your perspective and the way you approach life how should those four words change your life yeah and the the only sort of question to add to that is if you're about to go into something maybe you're anxious about school starting back up maybe you're a student and you're not sure how to feel and maybe you're I hear a lot about that. Yes. And not just because of coronavirus, but who knows? Maybe you're just anxious about your friends, your your friends, your are you going to be able to fit in, your social status, all of those things. Um, how can you help yourself going into whatever you're going into to remember the Lord is near? How can you remind yourself of that? Think of some things that you can do and discuss those with your family. How can you remind each other that the Lord is near? And as PJ already said, as you're asking yourself that, how does that change everything? Let's pray and wrap up. God, thank you that you are near. You're near to us even right now as these words are coming out of our speakers, our earbuds, um, and you hear everything that we say to you, that we pray to you. You're with us in every situation, ready to reveal your love and your strength and your power on our behalf. Um, and there's nothing that's too dark 
too dangerous, too scary, too big, too powerful for you to not be able to overcome it. So comfort us with that truth. Help us to receive that truth. Thank you that you are with us and there's nowhere that we can go that we're separate from your love and your power. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us again, everybody. And we will be back tomorrow. Hopefully you will too. Invite somebody else as well. Yeah. Share this with somebody. If it brings you encouragement, comfort, or hope, or uh, just a little bit of strength in these times, share it with somebody else. Yeah, please do. Take care. Bye, guys.